Thank God for another Bible study. It's been a while since I taught on Wednesday. <laughs> so if it looks like I don't know what I'm doing, please pray for me. Amen? Amen. 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 We want to talk about, uh, amen, I want to continue on what we talked about on Sunday school. On Sunday. Miracle signs and wonders. <clears throat> All right, miracle signs and and, and wonders. Amen. Just to uh, recap, let's go to Mark sixteen seventeen through twenty. Mark sixteen. 17 through 20. The book of Mark, chapter 16. S 17 through 20. And um, I'll just recap. Um, thank God for those of you that are here tonight. Thank God for all those that are streaming in to our live broadcast and our Wednesday Bible study. We thank God that you're able to tune in tonight. Man, we want to continue on with this lesson that we taught on Sunday during Sunday school. We didn't get um, through all of it um, because time was just not on our side. But uh, let's pick up real quickly in... Mark chapter 16, beginning at verse uh, number 17. Uh, let's just go up real quick to 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, or these miracles, that's what sign really means, it's the same word as miracle. And these miracles or signs shall follow them that what? Believe. That believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. And, 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 and really we would look at that. And how many thought that casting out a devil was a miracle or a sign? Or a wonder? We just thought that it was just casting out a demon. But he asked me the list what some of these signs are. Okay, in my name they will... Uh, they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Now we know that that's obvious, right? That's a miracle. Um, and then lastly, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall what? They shall recover. So, so what was that? What would that entail as far as a miracle, or as far as a sign? What would that be? Laying on of the hands, and they shall recover. Healing. Healing. healing, right? Well, all types of healing, mm -hmm. correct? Amen. So he lists out, amen, Jesus lists out some things, amen, that those that believe, this is why it's so important. And, and really, we just can't look at that word believe like I shared on Sunday. We just can't look at that word believe and, and, and just take it for 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 face value, if you will, okay, or according to Webster's dictionary, you know, to have faith, to have confidence in um, that word. Believe is is really a, a a deep, intimate word, amen, regarding our relationship with God in order for these things to take place, and we're going to discover, amen, how deep this really is. In the book of Acts, with some of those things that I listed, how many of you wrote down those things on on Sunday? There were four things. What were those four things? Boldness. Uh huh. And selfish. Uh huh. The word. Right. And honesty. And honesty. Right. I got two more that I added to that, and um, we'll try to get to it. Okay. So here, I mean, God gives us a mandate. This is a mandate to the church. Okay, miracles and signs and wonders, they don't come any other way, but through one way. What is that? 
Believe. Believe. It's simple, but yet, do we really believe? You know, and what does that believing really entail? Who can give me a Bible definition of believing? Huh? Leaning not to your own, own understanding, right? I mean, literally, taking the word of God, amen, even when you have, even when you really want to doubt, right? Even when things doesn't make sense, you want to, you, the only way that things, would, one thing that I've discovered with God is things just don't make sense. Not to the, to the human mind. Amen. God op operates, amen, the way that he operates. Once we think, okay, we got God figured out, amen, next thing you know, it just blows up in front of our face. We don't have God figured out. The only way we're going to know the ways of God, amen, is we got to know the word. All right? But it's more than knowing the word. You and I have to believe in the word. As much as some of us, look, I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes I don't believe in the word of God, meaning, praise God, not, not in the bad sense, if you will. Okay, sometimes doubt tries to come into our minds. Okay, sometimes, sometimes, you know, we look and say, man, that can happen. You understand what I'm saying? Not that I don't believe in the Word of God. It, it, it's just something about this, this carnal or this, 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 this nature of ours, you know, that deals with our mind. This is why the Scripture teaches us, amen, to walk in the Spirit, amen, to be spiritually minded. And the only way that you and I can become spiritually minded is by getting into the Word of God on a consistent basis, okay? Let me, let me just read some things here that I have come down, okay? The Lord, we know God Almighty, He is the possessor and origin of this power, this power to hear, uh, heal, His ability, okay? We talked about that in the book of Psalms, chapter 62, verse number 11, right? That power belongs to God. We talked about it in Romans chapter 13 and 1, right? That there is no power or there is no ability or authority you know, but of God, and we also talked about it in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 13 through 15, who God is the potent, all right, his ability to perform these things, okay? You and I <coughs> have the ability to heal anybody. God, amen, in his divine power, amen, has the ability to heal. We have to, uh, believe. believe in that power. Amen. I think we're getting there. I, I think I think we, we we're really we're getting there. Amen. Slowly but surely, I believe that you know. And um, God is just going to begin. We just have to, you know. I thank God for Brother Oso on Sunday. We just have to begin to what? Step out in faith. We've got to start putting legs to our faith. Amen. Amen. Somebody. Amen. We got to put that faith in drive. Amen. And we have to look. <clears throat> when we first started riding the bike, amen. Ain't nobody just got on and rode the bike. You fell a few times. Some of us, we had to put the training wheels on. Praise God. Amen. Walking with God, amen. It is a process. Amen. It is a process. The more and more we walk with God, the more and more we're faithful to God. The more and more we get into the Word of God, the sharper our ear becomes. Our spiritual ear, not our natural ear. Huh? The sharper our vision becomes. Amen. It's a fact. It's the truth. Amen. How do I know that? Somebody say, how do I know that? How do you know that? Keep walking with God and you'll find out. I can only explain to you. But you have to find this out for yourself. Because how many of us really, really want to know, amen, God on a deeper level? If you want to know God on a deeper level, you got to do some things. You got to sacrifice. You got to be committed. Amen. I didn't know that, praise God, it took all this. You know, some people say, you know, it don't take all that. Yes, it does. 
It does take all that. If you really want God, I'm not saying, you know, God use me, this, that, and the other. That's, that's being used by God is a byproduct of your relationship with God. Do you understand that? Because the more that you want God, the more that you are in his word, amen, the more you're crazy about God, you just begin to see God just working in your life. You see that God will just use your life automatically. Why? Because it's a byproduct. Just because you want to be used by God doesn't mean God is going to use you. You just have a desire. What we really need to have a desire for is God. Give me a desire to know you on a more intimate level. Yeah. The Apostle Paul said it like this. As a matter of fact, let's turn there. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 3, rather. Philippians chapter 3. <clears throat> Let's pick up at verse number 4. Let's. Philippians. And let's pick up at verse 4. Listen to what he said. You got it? All right, follow along with me. He says, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man figured that he had word of, he might trust in the flesh, he says, I am more. They were bickering about, you know, their lineage, where they come from. They, they, they were actually uh, boasting about the, the exterior, you know, that they're bona fide Jews and where they come from and this, that, and the other. They were just really just boasting about where, you know, who they are on the exterior. Sometimes we get like this. But the Apostle Paul had to really let them know, hey, listen, I'm the real deal. Not you all. Listen to what he says here. He says, verse number five, he says, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law, a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the, law, in the law, blameless. Amen. He said, this is why he says in the end of verse number four, if any other man thinking that he had more of, he might trust in the flesh, I'm more. He has every reason to brag about, amen, where he comes from. He is a bona fide Jew of the stock of Benjamin. He is a Pharisee. That means that he studied the law. As a matter of fact, he sat at the feet of Gamaliel. Okay, which was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, all right? He, um, touching, he said, like, verse number six, touching the righteousness which is in the law. He was blameless when it came to the righteousness of the, of the law, keeping the law to the letter and to the T. You couldn't mess with Paul. He says, I kept it. I knew it inside and out, okay? Verse number eight, though, he says, yea, doubtless, he says, and I count all things, but what? Lost. Lost. Listen, everything, praise God, his pedigree, his lineage, amen, who he sat under, all that stuff, his degree. He says, man, I count all that stuff lost for the what? Excellency of what? The knowledge of Christ. He want to know Christ on a more intimate level. You mean the Apostle Paul? Yes, he did. After he had his encounter, amen, in the book of Acts chapter 9, amen, with the Lord Jesus Christ. He was zealous. This is what he mean that he was zealous. He was so zealous because he knew the law that he was persecuting the church. And in his mind, he thought what he was doing was right. But it wasn't right. That was only righteousness according to the law and according to his flesh. But he yet did not know God. So this is why he says, amen, that I'm giving up everything. I count everything lost that I may, what, gain the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Let's continue to go on here. He says, the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the what? The loss of all things. The apostle Paul gave up some things. Let me ask you this again. How many of you want to know God on a deeper level? <laughs> he lost some things. But it's okay though. It's okay. Because you know what? 
Because if we want to know God, and I'm still dealing with miracle signs and wonders, because when you see, amen, what that reflected in the book of Acts, amen, the miracles that the apostle wrought, amen, that God did through the hands of the apostles, they lost something. There's going to come a point in our life, amen, that when we really want God and when we really want him on a deeper level, amen, you're going to see that you're going to lose some things. But you know what? It has to be that way. You know why? Because God isn't going to fight for you and he ain't going to come in between you and your stuff. We've got to give it up. It's either God or stuff. It's either God or my will. Right? This is just the way that God. But I guarantee you, this is <coughs> what I love about God, though. He He doesn't force Himself on us. Okay? He doesn't make us do anything that we don't want to do. But if you want to be blessed, okay, we're going to lose some things. But the thing that I love about God is He still gives us inner peace. He still gives us, amen. Joy. He still gives us, amen, a peace of mind. He still gives us, amen, the necessities that we need. Look, we may be lonely, but I'm not alone. Amen. Okay? We may be lonely, but we're not alone. Know that for a fact. All right, let's continue to go on with him. He says, yeah, doubt, doubtless. Oh, I am jumping ahead of myself. Oh, no, we're right there. Okay? For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them, but what? <clears throat> he count them as dumb that he may what? <clears throat> what does that word dumb mean? Manure. That's what the apostle Paul thought of everything. What's it? I'm fine, I just got a call. Thank you. He counted everything as manure. He counted everything that he counted and lost. He said, I count them dumb. Why? That he may what? Christ. That he may win Christ. All right? Let's go to number, number uh, nine. He says, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God, by how? Faith. By faith. Everything that we do is by faith. You've got to believe. If we are going to have this intimate relationship, if we're going to go deeper with God, everything has got to be by faith. What are you talking about? When the storms of life come, you got to go through it by faith. Because they will come. Amen. All right. Verse number 10, and he goes on to say, that I may know him. And the what? The power, the power of what? His resurrection. His resurrection. What else? And a fellowship of what? His suffering. Being conformable unto his death. How many of us still want to go higher and deeper with God? This is the thing that the Apostle Paul has outlined. Amen. And we're going to see that, okay? Number one, we dealt with both. <coughs> Let me just give us some things, amen, the four things that were evident, that were evident, Amen. When the miracles were being performed. All right. We covered boldness, okay? Uh, Acts chapter 2. Let, now let's go to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. You have any questions, comments? Please engage. All right. Let's go to 4. Acts chapter 4 and 13. If you got it, say, I've got it. Let me write this on the board. So for all of our viewers, um, okay, we're going to ask for thirteen through twenty one. If you got it, say I got it. All right, here we go. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge. Did we cover this on Sunday? Yes. We did, huh? Yes. Okay. Matter of fact, let's go to, uh, let's pick up at verse number 22 because this continues on. Let's go to verse number 22 now. 
Sorry, thank you. And we'll go all the way to the end of the book. 37, all right? 22, all right, here we go. For the man who was about 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing will show, what man? Huh? The man, was the man from the chapter gate. number three. The man was at the gate. The man that was sitting at the gate called Beautiful, all right? Verse number 23, And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all the chief priests and the elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, okay? What was happening here? Somebody give me a background. What was going on here? Who were they, who were they just facing and who did they just get through encountering with? The, the church leaders, right? The church leaders. They were kind of telling them, you know, that they can't be doing this kind of stuff, right? Go back up. Let's, let's just go back up to verse number 16 real quick. Saying, what shall we do to these men for that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in his name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God, hearken unto you more than unto God, judge you. For we cannot speak the things which we have seen and heard. And so here they are standing up, boldness, right? The boldness that we talked about on Sunday was not what? Arrogance. Arrogance. Right? But confident. Okay? They were confident in their God. Okay? And do you think that they were afraid? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they were. But the Holy Ghost, that power that was in them, why? Because the Bible says, amen, in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 7, God has not given us a what? Spirit, Spirit of fear, fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. Okay, now understand, understand what I'm saying. The fear was there, but that fear wasn't from God. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, the Bible don't say that. I don't want to say anything that the Bible's not saying. Well, praise God. I mean, you know, when something like that rises up where your life is being threatened and the religious leaders is telling you not to do these things, I mean, there's a literally in the natural, but then the Holy Ghost just has to kick in. Amen. And say, you know what? God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. They stood up, amen, for what was right. But listen, as they continue to stand up for what was right, let's continue to read on here. All right? Verse number 23, let's pick up. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with what? One accord. One accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel will gather together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to, uh, to be done. And now, Lord, their threatenings, hold on, they have been threatened by them. He says, grant unto thy servants that with all what? Boldness. That may, that uh, with boldness they may speak that words. A lot of things that come out of here and we'll, we'll, we'll cover it as well. All right, number one is what? They were united. Number two, he asked them, amen, to give us the boldness to what? To speak the, to speak the word. These are the things that were evident because why? There's going to be another miracle that comes out of this, all right? <clears throat> he says, verse 30, 
by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, here's number three. What was it? They prayed. The place was shaken where they assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they did what? Speak the word with what? Boldness. With boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of what? One heart and a what? One, one soul. Unity. This is another factor that comes into play here. Amen. Is that we have to be united. We have to have unity in the body of Christ, at least in this assembly. Amen. At least in this assembly, we have to be united. United we stand, and divided we fall. Amen. There's so many things, amen, that has to happen. Praise God for the miracles, amen, of God. At least this body, amen, we've got to come together as a unity. Amen. How many believe that the word is here? I believe that the word is here. Amen. We need prayer. We've been praying on Tuesdays. Amen. We have to continue. How many, how many of you, ever since we started this prayer thing, amen, and all hell and just broke loose in your house and your life and work and kids and this, that, and the other? I know it has for me. It's just like that. Why? Because there is a listen, we have we are engaged in spiritual warfare. You know, you know why nothing was happening when we weren't praying? Because we were fighting in the spirit. If you don't fight in the spirit, ain't nothing going to happen. <laughs> but the minute we start fighting in the spirit, amen, you got to roll up your sleeves. We got to get out the knee pads and get on the knees. Amen, somebody. Amen. But it's a good thing because we know, amen, this is what is going to unite us. This is what happened here. Amen. The Bible says, verse number 32, let's just go, well, verse number 31. It says that when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. The multitude of them that believed were of one heart, one soul. Neither said any of them that thou art, that thou art of the things which he possessed was his own. But what happened? They had all things common, which is the second thing On our list there. And what is that? Equal. Unselfish. They were unselfish. Okay? What's the other scripture that you have for that one? Acts 2? 41-47. Okay? They were they were unselfish. Are you starting to see where God really wants us to go with this? Listen, let me say this. The same need that was going on in the book of Acts is the same need that we face today. Amen. And guess what? Maybe even greater. This is why God said greater works than these. John chapter 14, verse 11 and 13. Greater works than these shall you do. Because I'm going back up <coughs> to where I belong. Do you think they suffered cancer? Do you think they suffered from high blood pressure? Do you think that they suffered from Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS? Do you think they suffered from dialysis? Do you think that they suffered, amen, all kinds of sickness? Do you think they, they suffered from AIDS? I don't know, but I don't, I don't think so, because God, number one, had them on a what? Strict diet. Mm -hmm. Certain foods that they couldn't eat. Most of their vegetation came from where? The ground. And they raised their own cattle, so they didn't have to deal with a whole lot of things, amen, that we're dealing with today. But the same thing, they still, did they have crippled folks back then? Absolutely. Did they have deaf and dumb people? Absolutely. 
Did they have blind? Absolutely. Did they have the dead? Absolutely. So the same means, amen, that were reflective back then are the same means of today. Is God still the same? Yes. Absolutely. They didn't have nothing back then, but they had more of God. We've got more today, but less of God. And it has to be flipped. Amen. To where God get rid of all the clutter out of my life. Amen. Some, 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 some of us, amen, our relationship isn't where it needs to be with God because we got too much clutter in our life. Amen. Wonder why we can't even pray a headache away. Too much clutter in our life. We have to learn to simplify our lives. Amen. Stop being so busy doing nothing. You ever see somebody just, just, just drive and fly right by you only to catch a red light? <laughs> That's how our life is sometimes. We're just so busy. Good. What are you doing? I don't know. I don't know. What you mean? You know? I don't know. I just got this to do. I don't know. What did you get done today? Nothing. Really? You know, because we just, you, you, you know, we got to be very careful that we don't allow, amen, that we don't allow society Amen. To push it. That I gotta do this. I gotta do that. You know, I gotta get here. I got no, you don't gotta do anything. What I gotta do is I gotta pray. What I gotta do is I gotta read. What I gotta do is I gotta witness. What I gotta do is I gotta get to God. I gotta, you know, look, if you got a whole lot of God, praise God. I'm telling you, you gotta give you a whole lot of time to do a whole lot of things. Amen. It works. It works when you really prioritize your time to focus with God. You will be amazed at the things that you can take care of on a daily basis and even on the weekend. Some of us, we work seven, man, we work seven days a week. That's one of our problems living here in America. And I'm just, I'm just throwing a blanket out there. I'm, I'm generally speaking because I, I be busy too. I be busy. But I have to learn to take time, amen, to settle down. And smell the roses. Enjoy life. Amen, somebody. Amen. Enjoy our walk with God. Because, look, if we are so busy and so caught up in the things of life, and we think we have life with God, you will miss out on your relationship with God, and you will miss out on the joy of walking and living for God. Put all of our emphasis on the things of God. And watch everything else just fall in place, okay? Unselfish, all right? Look at what they did. The multitude, them that believe, verse number 32, they are were one heart, man, that's unity. I can't stress that enough. We've got to be of one heart and of one soul. It has to be knit together. But how does that come about? We'll go back up to Acts chapter 2, and we'll figure that, amen. We'll figure out what it is that they did, all right? Let's continue to read on then. He says, uh, Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. Unselfish. They were willing to share what they had. You know what they say? My ranch is your ranch. My horse is your horse. This apple tree is my tree. But it's also your tree. That's what he said. He said all the things that they possessed, they man, they didn't say that these were our own. But they had all things common. Verse 33, he says, upon with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Because of unity, because of prayer, because of boldness. Because of unselfishness from the people. The apostles did great things in the sight. That God used them greatly. But guess what? Even the common people in that had a part to do with that. Watch this. Look at what they did. Verse number 34. Great grace was upon them all. Amen. That's what we need in the church. That's what we need in our life. We need the grace of God in our life. What is that? We need the favor of God. We need the mercy of God in our life. 
You got the grace of God in your, on your life and in your life. I'm telling you, you ain't going to need no money. You ain't going to need nothing. When you got God's grace upon your life, amen, money will find you. Amen. Food will find you. People will just start giving it to you. All right, listen to what it says in verse number 34. He said, neither was there any among them that lacked. How is it that we have so much of an abundance today, but yet we still lack it? They really didn't have nothing back then, but boy, they had an abundance. Why? This plays a big part in miracle signs and wonders. They were very unselfish. It says, neither of them lacked anything. So the Bible says, look, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses, what did they do? And did what? Not only were they unselfish, sacrificial. They sacrificed. How many of us sold something for the kingdom of God? I mean, I'm not trying to say this to make anybody feel bad. Because I'll tell you right now, I don't, I don't think I have ever sold anything for the kingdom of God. I'll be the first to tell you. But I'm trying to bring out some things, amen, that if we're going to experience, that, because God doesn't change. The book of Malachi says God, He changes not. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 8, amen, God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God doesn't change. It's our mindsets that change. It's our walk that changed. It's our relationship with God that changed. It's the intimacy. It's the, the, the hunger. It's the thirst for the things of God. That's what changes. Amen. I really believe this. I really believe that God is getting ready, amen, to, to start some serious miracle and healings right here. I believe it. This is why I got to. Me and also started talking on Friday, amen, about miracles and signs and wonders and stuff like that. And I was already preparing for this message on Sunday to teach for Sunday school. And then here he is coming up here and exercising his faith on his father-in-law. He began to tell me, it was funny, he, as he was cutting my hair, he began to tell me, amen, the things that he was doing on his wife. <clears throat> I never talked to him about that. It was just some things that he began to share with me. Amen. And you watch. Praise God. We're not going to be the normal. God is not normal. Do you understand that? Amen. God is abnormal. Praise God. What seems to be normal to you and I, it is normal to God. Healing ain't nothing to God. He's not short of any power and any glory. He's the, his ability, praise God. The Bible says that he's what? The all-potent. Amen. He's the all-powerful one. Amen. He's never, he doesn't come short. Amen. What comes short is you and I. And this is, this is the whole purpose, amen, of teaching and coming together. Amen. So that we can see some things that are outlined. Some things, amen. Listen, you and I have to take, amen, self-inventory and self-assessment. Amen. Praise God to get to this. We all have to be united. I mean, think about that just for a minute. The Bible says, amen, that they didn't think that the things that they possessed was what? Was their own. My car is your car. Mi casa su casa. My house is your house. Can we really say that, though? I mean, it's easier said than done, right? Is your car my car? <laughs> <laughs> Is your money my money? <laughs> See, when we ask you, huh? when the rubber meets the road, can we really say? But I mean, again, I ask. Do we really want to be deep with God? Yes. See, we want to be so deep in the word and know the word, this, that, and the other. Get deep with God. Get the heartbeat of God. Amen. Sacrifice for the things of God, and you will be deep in God. 
God will begin to show us some things. Oh, I'm, I'm asking my question. This, I'm asking myself the same thing too. Is my money your money? Is my car your car? I'm not just throwing it out there. That's the same question for me as well. But think about that just for a minute. The Bible says here, now look, and here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. This was a new developed church. This is shortly after, amen, the day of Pentecost. After 3,000 souls were saved. We're only in it to what? Two chapters, three chapters after the birth of the church. In Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Pretty deep, man. But these are the things that we have to do. I mean, this was what was evident when miracles and signs took place. And all these things took place. 34, neither was there anything that left. They sold everything. And verse number 35, look at what they did after they sold everything. And they brought the prices. They brought with whatever they sold. They brought all the money. They could have kept some of it back. It was theirs. The Bible didn't. God didn't tell them. Praise God. Well, well I can't say God didn't. Well, God had to tell them. Well, God had to put it on their heart to sell their stuff. Amen. For the furthering of the kingdom of God. Oh, this is ministry. They came and they laid them at whose feet? Wow, this one just hit me right here. They came, they sold everything, brought the money, and they gave it to the apostles, the men of God. And they made distribution to everybody. For what? For saints to be won. For people to be healed. This is, did they believe? Ooh, there's a definition of believing right there. Putting your money where? Where your mouth is. See, we can raise our hand and I'm in it too. And say, I will, amen, the power of God. I'm going to go deep in God. But how many of us, amen, if God were to speak to us? Now, I'm only saying this because if God speaks to your heart and tells you to sell something and give to the church, amen, for the furthering of the kingdom of God, how many of us will do it? Wow. This is pretty amazing, isn't it? All this for miracles, signs, and wonders. But you, you have to understand, they're blessed. The Bible says that they didn't lack anything. Their needs were met. David said it like this, I never saw, he says, I've been old and I've been young, but I never saw the righteous nor his seed Begging bread. When you're faithful to God in every area of your life, when you are faithful and you are committed to God, I'm telling you, you will not lack. I'm a testimony of that. Raising nine children, that's oh, nine children. Raising seven, no, my wife ain't going to be pregnant with two more. <laughs> Raising seven children and my wife, nine of us, that was hard. No food. But somebody always came by with a bag of grocery. Somebody always came by with a home-cooked meal for us. I'm telling you, these things, amen, if we, if we can learn, I mean, just so much, amen, time is not even allowing us to get here. All right? The unselfish act, amen, of the apostle. Verse 35, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto who? Amen. How, why? According to what? Amen. To their need. We're doing that to some degree here. You 
You're giving up your, your time and your offering. You're giving, amen, to the kingdom of God. And every money, amen, uh, that, that, that we have, praise God, in this ministry, that it goes helping people. It goes paying for our overhead. Amen. And thank God that we have a low overhead. But when the need, amen, arises for anybody in here or for those that are just walking off and those that God is touching our heart, amen, to help, the need is there. It is met. This is what ministry is really about. Now, we're not doing big things like other ministries or whatnot, but amen, if we continue on doing what we're doing, amen, giving sacrificially, they gave sacrificially. What would be nice if we have our own building so that we can do more things with more space and this, that, and the other, but the only way we're going to get there Sacrificial. Verse number 36. And Joseph, who by the apostles uh, was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, and Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Wow, even Barnabas. You know who Barnabas is, huh? Barnabas became one of the preachers and went out with the apostle Paul. All right, let's, let's go to uh, chapter 2. Still dealing with unselfish. Chapter 2, verse 41, uh, down to verse 47. Here's some of the things that they did, okay? After 3,000 souls, uh, the birth of the church, 41, that they that gladly received this word were baptized, and the same day they were added to them about 3,000 souls, about one day, the founding of the church. Verse number 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, the teachings of the apostles, all right, which is really the apostle, the teachings of Christ. They continued in the word of God. Because that's what the apostles did. They were preaching the word. Right? And then when, 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 fellowship, fellowship. And then bread. and what else? Prayers. These are some of the things that must take place. Right? Continue with the word, fellowship, breaking bread, prayers, and fear came upon every soul and maybe what? Wow. Wonders and were done by who? By the men of God. They didn't just come together just to eat. They didn't just come together, amen, just to talk. They came to come to, to, together to eat, talk, pray. Pray for the men of God. Pray, amen, that the word of God go forth, amen. That's why we need the men of God to stand. Amen. Amen. We need the men of God to stand on the holiness and the righteousness of God. To preach the word, right? Which is boldness. Okay, verse 44. And all that believed were together and had what? All things common, just like in chapter number four. And sold their possessions and good and parted them to what? To all men. The same thing. They did the same thing, and they continued daily with what? Unity. Again, in the church. And breaking bread house to house. They did, they uh, did eat their meat with gladness, singleness of heart. What else? And having with all people. And the Lord did what? Added to the church daily. Such as should be saved. That's a miracle. Salvation is a miracle. You know it was a miracle for you to be saved. Get saved. Amen. That's a miracle. Point to yourself and say, I'm a miracle. I'm a miracle. Because I thought I'd never get come on. You know, you run across your old friend and say, Girl, I thought you'd never get saved. <laughs> I thought you'd never change. It's a miracle. I'm glad for you. Stay on that track. Some people, some people's lives become better because you're saved. Amen. Huh? Because you were just a mess and a wreck in people's lives. I know I was. I was a mess and a wreck in my parents' lives. And when I got saved, you know what, boy, they were delivered. That's a miracle. We're a miracle. Because the world counted us out. Oh, so you ain't been through nothing. You ain't living together. You ain't been through nothing. But you were still a miracle. You know why, it was, you know why your life was a miracle? I love talking about 
about his life. Amen. Because everybody always uses the excuse. Well, church is for bad people. You know, well, why did you turn to God? The old people, well, see, there it is. How come good people never turn to God? Oh, so funny. Amen. That's a miracle. That you can grow up, amen, live in the ghetto, praise God, just like that fish. Also, the two true testimony of a fish. Live in the salt water, born in the salt water, swim in the salt water, but you still got to put some salt on him. He ain't salty. He was born in the ghetto, live in the ghetto, praise God. He wasn't touched by none of that stuff. God, I mean, that's a miracle. No matter how you look at it, you, you were just no good low down, dirty, rotten scoundrel, amen, and God still bless you, amen, that's a miracle, amen, you were just a goody to shoe, that's a miracle, amen, no matter how you slice it, and dice it, amen, salvation is a miracle, and here God added to the church 3,000 souls, and he not only added it, amen, in one day, but the Bible says right here that he added to the church daily, such as should be saved. People ought to be being, getting baptized. In the summertime, when we have a string of baptism every month, from April all the way to about September, something like that. Amen. We had like 19 baptisms within the first, within six months span. That's pretty good. Amen. But it can be better. Folk oh, need to be jumping in the water. People need to be, yeah, Jesus saved me. We need to share our testimony with people. Share the miracle. How many of you really looked at your life and say, amen, me being saved is written there? How many of you really looked at it as a miracle? None of us really did. But our salvation is a miracle from God. Think about that for a minute. How messed up we was in our mind. How God really changed our heart from a heart, from a bitter heart, from a hateful heart, from a jealous heart. To where now we don't even hate no more. I may not like your ways, but I don't hate you as a person. You understand? Amen. I can see you and I can say hi to you. I can see you, I can shake your hand. I can see you and I can hug you. Amen. How, how, how does that happen? It's a miracle. Because God did what? Open heart surgery, amen, didn't have to cut me up. The word of God, amen, that's what, and let's move on to the next one. The word of God. That thing was, was, was evident <laughs> that it was there. Right? Acts chapter 6. <clears throat> oh, Lord, help. Acts chapter 6, let's pick up that verse number 1. You got that, right? Amen. All right. Was that Acts 6? Acts 6, verse 1 through 8. I gave you a few of them, huh? 14 through 1 and 19, 8 through 11. 14, 1 through 3. 19, 8 through 11. 14, 1 through 3. 19, 8 through 11. 11, and even more 16 through 20, alright? Most of these we find in a book of Acts because this is what happened. All right, verse number one, let's read. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Greeks against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should, what? Leave the word of God and serve tables. They didn't have any structure yet at that time. For those to take care of, amen, the widows. They felt that they were being neglected, amen, and not only the widows, amen, but the daily administration work, amen, of taking care and running, amen, a newly founded church. And so here the apostle says, look, we can't do that kind of stuff. We've got to raise up some men, and we got to pick out some men, amen. This is where we get the office of the deacons from, if you will, amen, from right here. It says, the twelve then called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. This is one of the things, reasons why the, the 
pastors shouldn't be back there doing all the office stuff. Because he needs to what? The men of God need to get into their word. They need to be praying and getting into their word. Hmm? Pastors want to count the money. They want to handle the money and this, that, and the other. Why do you want to tempt yourself? I had to do it when we first started this operation, but I didn't really want to. I felt very uncomfortable doing it. I, I knew myself, I ain't going to touch that. I'm no fool. Amen. But this is the reason why God has us in order, and this is the reason why the twelve, amen, said to the multitude, amen, it's not reason for us to leave the word of God, to leave their responsibility, amen, to take care of the daily ministration. Verse number three, he says, Wherefore, brethren, look you out among you seven men of what? Honest, Honest report. This is the people that handle the daily ministration, amen, of the church. Bringing structure in. Full of the Holy Ghost. and you don't you, you don't want no one that can't add to be back there counting money. You don't want no one that don't know anything about surveying land or looking at a building, if you will. And then you don't want nobody, amen. You don't want no you don't want anybody back there that's just bad with no spirit. You know, or, or not only number, but you know, anything else that involved with stuff like that that has to take, amen, the men of God. This is why he has put these things in place. They have to be what? Honest. They have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You don't just put people back there, amen, because they're faithful. I mean, that's one of the reasons, but you understand what I'm saying. There are qualifications, amen, that are outlined in the Word of God. You don't just put somebody in there because they just, you know, you want to fill spot and, you know, you like the individual, this, that, and the other. They got to be filled with those things. They got to be honest. They have to be what? Wise. They got to be smart because this is a business and it's God's business. Right? This is what else he says. Whom we may appoint over this what? But we will give ourselves to continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Listen, we can have all these things. We can have bonus. We can have selfish. We can have, what, what, what do we got? We can have honesty. The other two things here, if you want to write them down, corporate prayer. Apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. 
they laid their hands upon them, and the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, listen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Is that an awesome responsibility or what? The word of God increase. The word is good. We need the word, but we also need all these other things to accompany. We need to come together as a unit. We need to come together as a body. Amen. We need corporate prayer. We need private prayer. I mean, boy, we get down on our praise and our worship on Sunday. I, I can't be waiting for praise and worship on Sunday. Huh? We get together for all these things. The boldness. You know, we need unselfish acts. <clears throat> Amen. Not thinking of our own self. Amen. But thinking of those that are sick. Thinking of those that are going through. Amen. You and I possess and we hold the keys. Amen. And God wants us to come together. Amen. To fulfill, amen, the mandate that God has given to us, the responsibility. You and I as a church, we have been commissioned. Amen. amen. God has came, given me a mandate, amen, as a pastor. Amen. You know what? Let's rally together. Let's get the body of Christ together. Amen. For miracles. When I'm talking about miracles, I'm not talking about just physical. I'm even talking spiritual. People need to be saved. I'm throwing all that in that. That all, amen, it, that all comes together with, you, you know, uh, uh, salvation and people being filled with all. Those are all signs of miracles and wonders. Amen. Who in the world, amen, it, 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 it can be filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in a language you never spoke of, amen, just in a matter of minutes. That's a miracle that only God can do. That's why we need this stuff. Amen. No matter what, you know, I hear somebody start speaking in Mexican and Sister Maria going in church. Amen. Huh. Amen. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. All right, we thank God for our Bible study tonight. Any questions or comments from those streaming in? No. All right. We thank God for all of our visitors. Uh, those that have streamed in, we thank God for all of you that are here tonight. Amen. Don't forget to let us pray. Amen. That God will continue to bless. Amen. Yeah. Um, this church. Amen. But let's really these things that we have talked about. Amen. Tonight in the list that we let's really earnestly just pray that God, Amen, will fulfill those things and put a, a passion in our heart for these things for the lost. Amen. For those that are sick, uh, Mother Foreman, Sister Sadie, for the Father. Amen, Sister Ada, and all these, amen, that are going through their physical challenges. And we know that God is able to do it, amen. Um, also, don't forget, on the 13th, Sunday the 13th, we will be having a guest speaker here with us. Amen. Bring somebody out to the house of God. As a matter of fact, bring somebody out to the house of God this Sunday. Amen. Invite somebody that they can come hear the word of God. Then they can't get saved if we don't bring them in. Amen. Right? Or they can't get saved if we don't share our testimony with them. Be a witness. And you know what? Live the life. That is the greatest testimony that we can ever have. Father, we thank you. Thank you. We give you glory and praise. We thank you, God, for your word that you have given to us tonight. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that we will come together, Lord, on these things that you have put in our hearts, Lord, to share with your people, God, that we may be on one accord, Lord, that we may come on uh, the same page, Lord, together with these things that, Lord, we have outlined tonight. Father, we just pray to God that you would increase, Lord, the word, increase this church, increase, oh God, Lord, the miracles and signs and wonders, oh God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for we do believe, Lord, that they are about to take place. They have already taken place. Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray, God, that you will bless us throughout the rest of this week. Take us to and fro, Lord, over the dangerous highways. Keep us, Lord, on our job. Keep our children, Lord, safely on the school grounds. And Father, those, oh God, that have lost their lives down in Southern California, Lord, we pray that you will, oh God, give those for each and every one of those families comfort. Lord, also those, Lord, that have lost their lives in Paris, Chicago, Baltimore, Lord, all these things that are going on. Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to be ready. Lord, for we never know, God, when tragedy, Lord, strikes us. 
Father, we thank you, O oh God, for all things. These blessings we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us all say amen. 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 amen.